Hello, we are at the new Walton Club on this Friday evening. It's the first ever live recording of the 1904 Club podcast, the Hall City one, from the Hall Daily Mail. Hopefully you've, uh, you've been listening to our nonsense over the last few months with myself, Prutz, Burnsy and James Fletcher. As I say, we are here tonight, um, the night after the transfer window closed. Lots of business done, of course, by Hall City and we'll talk about that tonight with Vice Chairman Tam Kessler, who I'm delighted to say will be here with us tonight. And from the Dominican Republic, he's the lucky one, isn't he? Uh, Ajun Illigella, the Hull City owner, will be joining us as well via video link. We've also got club legend Ian Ashby in for David Prutton tonight. He will be here as we host a live recording of the podcast. We've got a sold-out audience of 300 guests that will be filing in a little later on. We'll be taking their questions, getting their thoughts. And hopefully we'll have a really good night. This is the first time we've tried it, so hopefully we don't get kicked out. It goes well and everything's a laugh and we'll, uh, we'll be able to do it again. So. I need to see it. Yeah, me please. What name is it? Elliot. What's the first name? Brian. Billy. Brian. <laughs> Brian Elliot, got you there. Brilliant. Lovely. And you are? Cultural. Gary. Gary. joining us um, on the on the show tonight. Illigella's right hand man uh, put it together for Tan Kessler. Uh, the whole part of tonight is, is for you to interact with the panel and ask questions of all the panel tonight, uh, myself, Baz and, and Fletch included, but our guests tonight are special guests, so uh, rightly so, they will take the focus of attention. Um, our next guest, uh, we're really pleased to get him, um, because I'm sure he gets lots of invites to do lots of things. He is a legend, he is a colossus in the history of Hull City. He's a legend in the history of English football because I don't think anybody has captained the side from the bottom division to the top division of English football. He gave everything for this club. In fact, he gave more than everything because he's given them a son now as well, never mind his own <laughs> playing career. He's donated a son as well, so have him, he's not bad. Uh, the lad is called Stan, the dad is the wonderful, legendary, put your hands together, Mr. Ian Ashford. <laughs> we will be joined by a couple of uh, special guests a little later if the satellite link works, but we'll, we'll, we'll be fine. We've, we've invested in two tins of beans. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got him. No disrespect to any of the other ones, but was the one you thought, wow. I, I mean, it's hard. I mean, I'd, I'd love to have that friendly, you know, uh, moments with you guys, but I think every single bit of them is just so meaningful to us. 
and, and we did, you know, uh, cherish every single one of them in different moments because Fabio came early and Anas came at the end. Um, you know, Abdush, we call him Abdush, he's, he's, he's a Turkish, you know, gem for us. We were just shocked how he decided to come to us and how his club left, let him go for, to us on a permanent basis. And all the other boys who came in, we had our moments. But I also want to interrupt one more thing. As you can imagine, we didn't do any business on the, on the central defender side. So open the fact that we have the right players, the right young boys who, who would be... He's looking at you, Ash. Honest with you, you know, that you was uh, mentioning what he was like, stand up. He's left footed, I was right footed. He's pretty good on the ball, I wasn't the best on the ball. So I was checking around who was in the team at the time, left footed. Six foot three. <laughs> I went back through the old program. I, I, I've got it. It's Damon Delaney. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't chuck the misses the other day. What do you want? What stuff want? Uh, yes and no. I mean, uh, definitely for for till summer. Yes, but um, um, obviously when Liam's arrival is this different time than some of those players who, who were in and then, then went out and etc. So we've as a, as a uh, ownership had made some also uh, uh, decisions that didn't pay out, but we've always been honest with you guys, and we've always been honest and told everyone that we will be honest with our mistakes, and, and, and we will share the successes all together. So the idea was to, to, two years ago to have the most interactive uh, uh, club that we can, we can build all together. So there are some players who didn't work out when Liam arrived, but there were also some decisions that didn't pay out for us also. But I can guarantee you one thing, me and the chairman, he will also be on and, and, and ex explain to you guys. We, we are exceptional with, with recovering from our mistakes in a short time. Our success, and we always say it everywhere, our success is relies on, we don't get stuck with, the, with our mistakes or decisions, wrong decisions or decisions that doesn't pay. We, we focus on how we can recover back so quickly, then we can entertain people as, as quickly as possible. More or less, we're looking at to develop a stadium development project is more or less anywhere from 24 million to 32 million. So you're basically looking at a, a new stadium, kind of. And, and Chairman and I, we don't want to use our resources here while we're just losing our comp competitiveness. We had a brilliant project, and then we proposed it to the city, and we said, listen, you know, uh, and, and, and the city council and everybody else. Um, and, and I believe we, we had elections and a lot of changes and losses and all that stuff. But I'm, at, I'm, I'm quite lost at the moment, you know, to answer that question, and I'm a little bit discouraged. Uh, um, why? Because the fair is an issue, uh, uh, um, and, and, and being able to giving us uh, an additional piece of land is an issue. Also, um, given the long term of the stadium, lease of the stadium is an issue. So all these are an issue, and it's not being resolved from the, the, the city, by the city, and expected us to bring in that kind of an investment on the table and just built it, and, and also expected to, to, to be part of it. So uh, to be honest with you, it's on, it's, on, it's on the city side, and I'm not gonna, from that moment, if I don't see any proactive approach by the city, city council by 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 I mean, I'm not going to do, and we're not going to do anything because we're fine. You know, we're, we're just the stadium lease is for another 30 semi years. We're not going anywhere. In 30 years, if we're here, we'll build another stadium. Maybe I don't know. In a couple of times promotion can give us an opportunity to do something on a bigger magnitude. But at the moment, I'm discouraged. I have to share this with you. It's not about the tiredness of the transfer window. It's about the, the, the movement of the city council and approach, positive approach always there, but not being able to, to, to proactive approach hurts me in a little bit. And, 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 and I'm just kind of delegating the situation as long as possible. So it's, it's, it's on, from our end, it's gonna, it's gonna delay. It's gonna put people spawned and we're gonna just Maybe forget about it for a couple more years until we play it with the Barak boss. He's not their player. <laughs> uh, he's, he's a whole city player. So, uh, um, I know social media, I'm starting to love even more. Uh, but um, um, 
I should be more present, I have to be honest with you. Um, but to, in terms of one thing, of course, I have to be been open to you guys from the beginning, so that, that also you need to know. If you promote, you know, Willa has, a, has, a, a, um, has agreed a buyback, and, but only if you promote and if you're in the Premier League. So, but they still have to agree with the player and then they still have to match. Um, this is very important. They still have to match if you receive another offer. And I've been telling you guys that, that we have quite a good network. And when the time comes, I, I think it would be a hefty deal for a good one to get him back. But they're our friends, so I'm not, I'm not saying you know, anything I shouldn't be saying here. From your point of view, Ajo. Everything is better, of course. Uh, this was the first, uh, I think, we've been able to join us for a little while tonight, and uh, he's hoping that the team can really, really take advantage of the transfer where the you and the, 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 the guys are going to be okay to stay and get into the playoffs and really take advantage of, as I said, the work you've done. Thank you so much, Ajo, for, for taking the time. Here's the three points against Millwall tomorrow afternoon. A question. How on the left wing, right wing, it depends which way you're looking at it. What's your question? What's your name? Uh, it probably would have been a question for Tan, really, but I suppose bad for laugh to do. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> but much to probably a lot of Hull City fans disapproval. I was a big fan of Scott Twan and I don't know as much as Baz maybe would know, did Hull City want to keep him? Was it mainly Bailey's decision to take him and send to Bristol? Obviously, I don't know. Again, believing things on Twitter is maybe not the best thing to do. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but Bristol, I don't know if they have an option to buy him. Is maybe that the reason why? But yeah, I would have liked to keep Scott Twan. Yeah, I, I kind of... Uh, I actually thought Twine did okay. Um, did he do as well as I thought he would do? No. Uh, I thought his set play delivery was not as good as it should have been, particularly what we've seen from him previously. I don't think City were too concerned about losing him because they obviously knew they, they had a strategy in place. Uh, and I, I, From conversations I've had, I didn't get the feeling that they were overly hammered with Scott either in terms of his performance level. Great lad, wonderful player to have around the room. Um, did really, you know, obviously a really talented boy, but I don't think they got from him what they thought they were getting at the start of the season. So when it became clear that they could sign Carvalho, that the decision became very, very easy for them, that they were okay for Burnley to recall him. These conversations are ongoing all the time with the club, with parent clubs and, and what have you. And then Bristol City, I think they've announced it as an initial loan, but there is definitely an opportunity there for Bristol to make it permanent. Obviously, they, he played with, with Liam Manning, uh, the MK Gons and he was a manager that got the best out of him. So a bit disappointed given that Azure has spent, you know, well, well in excess of 12 months trying to get him to Hull City. But the fact they got Carvalho uh, made that easier. They've obviously now signed Abdush and I think as well bringing him in now is brilliant because it gives him, there's no, if there was no Carvalho, there would be pressure on Abdush to come in, be the creative influence, hit the ground running tomorrow. They can afford to bed him in slowly over the course of the next three or four months get him acclimatised to England, the Championship, with Carvalho going back in the summer, they should have then their own player ready to hit the ground running in, in, in pre-season. Myself. Um, 
I was I played for England under 18s when I was like 16, 17, so I knew there was something in there. Um, and you know, I, I was at Cambridge United. We got promoted at Cambridge twice, so I, I, I've been kind of. Uh, what was that moment like when he rang you or came to you and said, "Look, I'm going to make my debut at St Andrews." Up in my pants, to be honest. I mean, <laughs> me, I can deal with anything that's thrown at me. Uh, but when it's your little boy, and he's a little, me little boy, he'd always be that. It's it was very difficult, you know. I was going down to Birmingham, where I was from, um, and I went on my own. I didn't want anyone near me. I put a big hood on. I was in the I was in the stand, and I could hear a few people going, "You know, Stanley Ashby's fan. He's only 17." And I was thinking, "Don't react. Don't react. <laughs> please don't react." And I think he's tired to give the ball away. And so. Oh, now, what did you think when, oh, oh, when he was up against Oliver Burke, who was, who, who was quick? What was you thinking? Yeah, I mean, listen, he, uh, this is another reason why I'm not so sure if he's mine because he's pretty quick. <laughs> so I, thought, I, 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 mean, I said he'd be able to deal with him. He, he was rapid, that Burke. But yeah. it, it, I, I know him as a kid, and it just took him five, ten minutes to settle down. And, and once he settled down, you know, he, he's 17, um, he's a young boy, like, and um, he, he went, Liam took him up to the training ground, and um, he hasn't basically gone back to Bishop Burton where the academy is, so he stayed there. Um, he's obviously impressed for Liam. Uh, I couldn't be happy that Liam's there looking after him, and you know, it's kind of he's on his own journey. There's nothing I can do. I can't cross the white line for you, pal. You go go and do it yourself, and you know, he, he's doing it. He's fit. He's a he's a lovely lad. He's got a great temperament. So another reason why I'm not so sure if he's mine. <laughs> Um, enjoy the game tomorrow. Uh, join us for the podcast on Monday. Thank you very much for your company. The bar is still open, by the way.